Hotels provide comfort in foreign destinations for all kinds of travelers. However, not everyone that walks through those doors gets to leave alive. So get comfortable and let the darkness take control. Number one, I worked maintenance at a hotel in Montana about a decade ago. It was mostly normal shit. Guests were rarely an issue. The job was meh, but I was a broke student at the time in college. Weird shit happened to me when I got stuck with the late shift from 7pm till about 2am. Honest to God, I still can't explain it. I was downstairs in the basement, setting up the big meeting room for some big event tomorrow. I have to explain the layout of this meeting room for people to understand. It was this huge room with three doors. The main door that opened into the hallway, the fire exit which locked from the inside, and the kitchen entrance. The kitchen had two entrances also, one into the meeting room and the other opening into the hallway. Anyway, that night I had spent all of the first part of my shift setting out this room by myself. Fifteen big tables, tablecloths, centerpieces, and God knows how many of those metal stackable chairs. It was about five hours of doing that, and I was actually pretty proud of my setup and vacuuming the hallway outside of the meeting room. I watched as the kitchen crew closed up for the night and waved them off. Lights out, and it's just me and my vacuum in front of this big ass meeting room. I was finishing up my vacuuming when I hear the unmistakable sound of those metal chairs being stacked. Anyone who has ever stacked or unstacked those chairs knows that weird hollow metal clang. Especially me, after doing it for a few hours. I was a bit pissed. I had just spent five hours setting up this meeting room and figured that one or two of the kitchen staff went into the lounge before they clocked off. Mind you, I am in front of the main door to the meeting room, and the hall door for the kitchen. The only way in or out of this meeting room was past me, aside from the fire door, which you can't get in from the inside. Anyway, I hear the clanking, and I go running into the room with a, Hey guys, knock it off, expecting to see a cook or two, rearranging my precision chair setup. Instead, I am greeted with no one. The room is exactly as I'd left it. No chairs were moved. No one was in. I double-checked the kitchen, and no one was in there either. I shrugged it off as a trick of my ears and went back to vacuuming. As I finish vacuuming and turn it off, I hear the clanking again. Unmistakable. Clear as day. Coming from the big room, again, I stomp into the room and proceed to do a thorough sweep, checking under tables, behind the podium, even in the storage closet in the back. There was no one. I'm getting a bit freaked out, so I just stand in the middle of the room, straining my ears to hear anything, thinking that maybe the noise is coming from the vents outside or something. But there's nothing. Just me breathing. I shrug and head back out to pick up the vacuum. Winding the cord, I just happen back towards the main door of the meeting room. Before my head turns fully towards the door, I see someone walking right past the opening inside the room. I freak the hell out. I yelped and ran up the stairs to the main floor. I told management I was clocking out early and went home. Next day, 
I went in and got a minor scolding for not putting the vacuum away. I didn't believe in ghosts, and I have no explanation for what I saw. I heard the noises clearly, and I saw someone go past the doorway. I asked to be transferred to the day shift after that. Later that year, I quit the job to go back to school. One of my co-workers mentioned that one of the cleaning ladies was telling everyone that the basement was haunted. I don't know. It still gives me goosebumps whenever I think about that night. Number two. I worked in a very old Riverside Hotel in England when I was younger. The place was 17th century, but there'd been a building of sorts on that spot for far, far longer. We'd always understood it was haunted. There were reports of voices and things that were moved regularly. People would complain that their rooms were cold even when the heating was on. I myself had been tapped on the shoulder more than once by, well, by nothing. We all felt that there were at least one female spirit there. It had been a brothel in the 1800s, so it made sense. My job was to make up the beds and clean the rooms. I was quite young at the time, around 18, so I used to sometimes get unwanted attention from perverted old men. One time, this man in his 40s kept saying things to me. I was so uncomfortable, but he was booked in for a week, and so I felt too shy to say anything to the manager. On his third day, he'd gone out very early, and I made up his room, put clean towels in, and just as I was leaving, I said something like, bloody old perv, I hope you get sick. And that night, long after I'd gone home, he came down to reception at around 11pm and complained to the night manager there that there was a stink in his room and that it was making him feel very unwell. The manager went up to his room and it just reeked of vomit. He looked under the bed and in the cupboards to see if the man had thrown up there and hidden it. But no traces were found. He moved the man to another not so nice room, and went back downstairs. Half an hour later, the man was back. He said that the room smelled of vomit as well. The manager just ended up spraying air freshener in the room, as there was nowhere else to put the man. He left in the morning and got a refund. When they told me what had happened, I felt that our female prostitute ghost had heard what I said about him, getting sick, and had literally brought him sick in the form of that smell. Number three. Before I was born, my parents decided to move to the coast and open their own little seaside hotel. The first thing to do when they moved in was to clean up all the rooms. So they took half each to speed things up. My mum told me this story when I was little. She was in room number eight doing some vacuuming when the whole carpet started rippling. When I was little, I didn't think it sounded scary at all and had just thought that maybe the carpet had got caught on a vacuum or something and so I never did really think about it again. Fast forward to about a month ago. I remember this old story, and made fun of my mum a bit, thinking it was creepy, when it was obviously explainable. She looked confused, and told me I must not have understood her when I was little. Apparently, what had actually happened, was that the entire carpet had rippled, in a constant fluid wave type motion and all of the furniture and herself had been lifted up and down off the floor for about 10 seconds she then screamed bloody murder 
and went to find my dad, to tell him that they were going to sell the place before it had even opened. He managed to convince her otherwise, but she never went back into that room. It scares more because my mum doesn't believe in the supernatural or anything like that, and doesn't have any other creepy stories other than that one. Just this one, and she doesn't like to talk about it often. Number 4 My mother used to be the manager of this old mansion style hotel that was primarily used for weddings. According to her and the rest of the staff, the place was definitely haunted. Several stories validating these claims stick out in my memory. Something about a chef killing himself in one of the rooms, or the original owner's daughter dying in another. I mean, though this place was very beautiful and elegant, it was huge and several hundreds of years old. So you can imagine that some of these stories weren't very hard to believe, especially since my mum always was working there late, and sometimes alone, and had consistently creepy stories to share. The one that sticks out in my mind the most is relatively tame, but absolutely chilling. So one night, after one of the weddings, my mother and the rest of the staff are cleaning up. They did normal things, clear the tables and tablecloths, break down all the equipment, collect the decorations, and box them for the client. Then place all the chairs upside down on top of the tables, so that the next day they could vacuum and mop easy. The wait slash cleaning staff leave around midnight But, being the manager, my mum has to stick around and close up shop. So, as she's making her way to the back office on the ground floor, she passes the dining room and sees the chairs are still placed on the floor around the tables. Despite the fact, she almost certainly remembered placing them on top of the tables an hour prior She goes around the entire dining room, placing them back on the tables, and then proceeds to continue what she was doing before. About an hour later, around 2am, she's getting ready to leave, going from room to room to turn the lights off. The last room she has to turn the lights off for is the dining room. So she goes in, gets ready to turn off the lights. And what does she see? The chairs are back on the floor around the tables. The way she tells the story, it was at this point that she froze in a mix of terror and confusion. And she just ran out the building and drove home. Number five. I used to work in a hotel part-time for a while, and there were always rumours about it being haunted. It was an old building that had changed hands many times, but had been a hotel for years, and now it's a big brand hotel. Anyway, there was this one floor none of the staff liked going to in particular at night. Customers often complained that they could hear banging on the walls and children messing around in the hallways. But when we went to check, we never found anyone or anything. It was quite common that when someone was staying next to an empty room, they'd hear banging from that room, freak out and request a change. I had a couple of spooky occurrences whilst on that floor. I went into a room that had just been cleaned, since I was putting updated leaflets and menus out, and then I heard the shower running. I walked in and turned it off, thinking it was a bit odd, but perhaps the cleaners accidentally knocked it and left it on, but surely they'd have heard it running full blast. As I was doing that, one of the pictures off the wall fell off, 
and I come in to this picture smashed on the floor and had to call somebody to clean it up and get it off the carpet. And I swear, it looked like some small footprints were coming from the shower to the bed near where the picture fell off. I noped out of there. I heard the sound of footsteps many times and once heard a child's laughter, but I couldn't trace the source. It sounded like someone was in the same hallway, but nobody was around and it was very late. One of my friends who used to work there at the time said she was in the kitchen and she saw a woman in the mirror dressed in old clothes. (laughs) Number six. This happened when I was working in a hotel as a cleaner in New Zealand. The entire second floor had been shut down. This happened during that time. So the second floor had been shut down and we had just begun vacuuming and stain removing all the carpets when suddenly the hand dryer in the woman's toilets on the end starts turning on. You know, the shitty hot air ones that don't dry your hands at all. We go in there, thinking that someone went into the toilet and just took an abnormally long amount of time. As soon as we open the door, the dryer stops completely. We go in and sure enough, nobody's there. So we leave and let the door swing shut. As soon as it swings shut, The hand dryer goes off again, at full noise. I go open the door, and it stops again. We do this another three times, before we get the great idea to have one of us go in the toilet, and the other lets the door shut. So, I stand in the toilet, and she lets the door shut. As soon as the door shuts, I get a massive chill up my spine, The lights go out, and the hand dryer starts. I boulder my way out of there, and we just left the upstairs that night. Too creepy. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. We're so close to 40,000 subscribers, and to celebrate, I'll be sharing a topic that I've been saving for a while. Try and guess what it is in the comments section, and I'll shout you out in the next video if you guessed it. Here's a hint. I have never done this topic before. Also, where I am right now, every time the refrigerator changes temperature, which it does frequently and by itself, it makes this annoying beep sound. So if you heard a random beep during the video, I'm really, really sorry. I tried to edit them all out. Remember that if you want to share a story, you just need to submit it as a text post on my Reddit page or send it to me via email. Both links can be found in the description. And if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to not miss your daily dose of horror. Because, as we know, if you don't hit like, YouTube thinks the video was uninteresting. And if you would like to do something truly amazing today to help support the channel, you now can via Patreon. And you can find the link in the description if you'd like to know more, as well as the links to my social media pages. But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.